The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. It's Andy Brownell along with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. On this Saturday morning, the first Saturday in June. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Jeepers. Well, here we are, summer I know. officially, June. Crazy. <laughs> Kids are just about out of school, and uh, yeah. graduation parties are in full progress, and there's going to be weddings and all that summer stuff. Yeah, it's going to be busy summer. I, I, you know, I mean, I've got two weddings this year, two I kids too. getting married, so... Oh, you, two of your kids are getting married? Yes. Oh, my gosh. That, that is a busy summer. I have two to attend. I got nothing on you, baby. That, yeah, two weddings. That's a big summer. So we're in June. I imagine this is prime time selling season for for houses, for real estate. You know, the weather is so nice. Question. It's such a good question. I had somebody call me this week, and they said, have we missed the selling season? I said, oh, my goodness, No. Um, that would be like going to Disney on a 97 degree day with a cooler full of ice water at three in the afternoon and say, <laughs> did I miss, did I miss my opportunity to sell my ice water? Because the fact of the matter is, is that when something is in demand, it's in demand. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, it does, it just doesn't matter. I mean, he said to me, I suppose you're, you're all downhill from here. He was serious. You know, like he said, you're probably the busiest in March and April and May, and now the rest of the year is all downhill. I said, absolutely not. Our production actually stays pretty level throughout the year. I mean, there's a couple of slow periods, and we've talked about this before. Sure. It's always slow at the end of the year, last couple of weeks for the holidays. And it's typically kind of slow right now because of what we just spoke about, you know, the high school graduations and the kids getting out of school and people taking vacations and weddings. But because of our inventory situation, when something hits the market, it sells. And when something hits the market, people are flocking to it. So we are not slowing down. And I honestly think we're just going to ramp up. I think the second half of the year is going to be even busier than we have been the first half. So... Yeah, okay. no, it's still prime season to sell your house. So with that short inventory, which has become the normal for this market. Right. And people listening, thinking, you know, maybe it's time to think about selling this place. And you're, you're like me who, <laughs> you know what, to be honest with you, I've never sold a home. I've only bought a home. Oh, wow. So you've we been built, at the same home. Yeah, we built this home and we've been in it ever since. So at some point I'm going to have to sell it. Not today, wow. sorry, but... No, you better not because, you know, your son and his family will be right next door. They wouldn't probably like no, that very, probably much, very much. Yeah. We, we were just sick of them, so we want to move away. <laughs> we won't tell them. Don't worry. They'll never hear it. <laughs> I'm joking, so of course. Uh, but, of you course. know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I mean, where, where do you even begin with this process? Yeah. You know, and it's different all the time. Every market, this process looks different. So... The, the first thing is, is to line yourself up with a great real estate agent. Now, we're available. We have a big team at the Gwaltney Group, but I am not trying to make any claim that we are the only great real estate agents in Rochester because that would be ridiculous. There are lots and lots of good real estate agents in Rochester. So I say you call that agent that you have that relationship with. If you don't have a relationship with an agent, certainly call us or get a recommendation from somebody that you trust so that you're working with somebody that has done a good job for somebody else. Because it is kind of a tricky market and you do want somebody who can do a good job for you. Okay, do okay? I? So that's where you start. I make the phone call. Yeah, and I also tell people, even when they call me and say, I'm ready for you to list my house, if I've worked with them before, then I know that they know me and I know that they really are ready for me. If I haven't, I do say, have you interviewed anyone else? Because I would recommend that you do, because it's really important that you pick the realtor that is the right fit for you. You want to make sure that um, your personalities are going to jive. You're going to see eye to eye. You're going to be in close contact with each other. You're going to want to make sure that they have the same communication style you do. And if you want to talk with them 
frequently. You want to make sure they're going to be available to speak frequently. If you don't want them bothering you, you want to make sure they're not going to bother you. I mean, so you want to make sure that you've, you've um, matched yourself up with the right realtor. So not only do you want their experience and their knowledge and them to prove to you that they know what they're doing, but you want to make sure that your personalities match. And if, are there any questions specifically I should make sure get answered? Absolutely. Um, I can just tell you some of the questions that people ask a lot, okay? They will ask me things like, um, have you sold other homes in that are like mine or in this neighborhood? Or how many homes do you sell a year? Or how many years have you been in the business? Or how many years have you sold total? You know, they kind of want to get a feel. So if they haven't gotten a personal reference, then they're trying to do their own research and kind of figure those things out. Those are all fair questions. The one I think I'd ask for sure, though, would be, let's say, you know, you're off at a spa. <laughs> and, yeah. And something comes up and, you know, am I going to be able to talk to somebody? Correct. So, as you know, I took a very much needed 48-hour break last weekend. <laughs> I felt like I literally cut my oxygen off because I am never without my phone in my hand. And it pained me at Friday afternoon to say, this is for real. I'm shutting this phone off and putting it in the safe and I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at emails, text messages, phone calls. I had just been through a lot. I lost my dad. I was super close to him. We were the primary caregivers and I just really needed to just take a break. But it was so nice to be able to say, if you need anything, please call my son, Brett. This is his number. He will be available. And it's nice to know that if I'm not available, somebody else on my team is. Now, we have a big team full of really good agents, so it's easy for me to hand my business off to anybody. But on the holiday weekend, it was easy to pick on my son <laughs> over the rest of them. <laughs> you know, he owes his old mom a few things. So oh, right. yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was very gracious <laughs> about it. But yes, yeah, so it is nice. I mean, there are, there are um, some really good agents that are still doing business the old-fashioned way, where they're just a one-man band. And, you know, if they're out of town, they're out of town. And sure, they have an agent in the same office that will cover for them, but it is, it's not the same in my opinion. And I'm not here to, you know, to bash anybody's style of doing business, but you do need to know that. Those are good questions. Like what happens when you are away? Who is your backup? Or are you actually available to do open houses? If somebody calls you at the spur of the moment to show my listing, will you be available or will somebody from your team be available? So you do want to know. I, I always tell people when I go to a listing appointment, the three things people want to know is how much are you going to sell my house for? Okay. How long is it going to take to get it sold? And what's it going to cost me? And people kind of think that those are the only three things they need to know. And those are all really important things. But then I also tell them there's so many more things you need to know and you need to ask, like how frequently will we be talking throughout this listing? You know, will we talk only when an offer comes or will we have check-in calls each week? Like what is your communication style? What do you need from me? And I tell people, if you wanna just call and say, Robin, should I be concerned that we've been on the market two days and haven't had a showing set up yet? Call me because if you're feeling anxious about something, I want to be able to talk you through it. So those are things that are super important. Yes, it's important to know how much is my house going to sell for? How long is it going to take? How much is it going to cost me? But how are we going to go about this process? What does this process look like? So those are all really important discussion topics. Okay. The other question I think I might ask is, oh, the market's strong you know, for the seller. Why should I even have a realtor? Oh, that is such a good one. Um, so I happen to have a friend who is a licensed realtor in another state, and it's in Wisconsin. And she, her husband and son purchased a house together to flip it. And she called me and she goes, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not going to list it. I'm like, oh, I know you're crazy because, yeah, people are going to write offers because of the shortage of inventory. But people who aren't working with realtors do not know how to write offers. So they're going to write offers for asking price or if they think they're getting aggressive, 
they're going to write offers for a thousand or two thousand or three thousand over. So guess what's going to happen? They have a certain day that they have to have all their offers by. I said, you're going to get a half a dozen offers that are going to look the same. And none of them are going to be like blowing you away because they have no clue because they're not working with real estate agents. You're doing yourself a huge disservice. I think um, I've quoted this stat before, but last year the National Association of Realtors figured out that the sellers who sold for sale by owner on average sold for 11% less than those sellers who used a licensed realtor. Well, so obviously. It doesn't cost them 11%. <laughs> right. So they shorted themselves money and caused themselves a lot of stress and headache. So there you go. I mean, it, it is what it is. And sometimes people think they can do things themselves to save money. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, I know horror stories in houses where, oh, we thought we would be able to change this backsplash and we didn't realize that now we made these big holes in the wall we have to get this guy to come back and put in the new sheetrock and then we've got to get them to put this new one on and we should have just had them do it in the first place because it would have been cheaper they wouldn't have had to make the repairs you know right. and i'm like yeah sometimes you you when you think and i mean i'm not gonna say that some people aren't capable of doing it because i've walked into some homes and they said oh i did that myself i'm like whoa you could go into the profession i mean so some people are quite handy it's just that we need to stay in our lane if you're good at something do it if you're not for pete's sakes hire the people who are i imagine that's a pretty easy sell when you go okay if you have me as your realtor odds are i'm going to be able to sell the house for more than what you could sell it for past the commission that i'm going to make and it's going to be a lot less stressful for you well and not only that but the offers are going to come come to us through realtors that have written them, who have vetted these buyers, who've made sure these people are uh, approved for their financing. Nobody, no for sale by owner is going to write their own, you know, like somebody representing themselves going to write their own offer, bring it to that person who's selling on their own and say, oh yeah, I haven't been to the bank yet. Oh, nobody can get a loan or not. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just flirting with disaster. There's and a yes, way to put it. you know, some people out there, are listening and saying, oh, I sold myself for sale by owner and it went fine. Well, you just don't know how it would have gone had you gone the other direction. Yeah. That's Very all. Very good. We have to take a break. So we'll be back in a moment. We're talking about selling your home with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on Newstock 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome to Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results on this Saturday morning. We've been chatting about selling your house, especially if you haven't done it for a long, long time or have never done it, things you probably should know about the process. And uh, we have covered interview prospective realtors. Yeah, and so once you have made that decision, uh, who you're going to list with, then you, I guess I can only speak to my style. Everybody does it a little differently. So I'll just tell you, if you've decided to list with me, what it looks like, okay? Yeah. So... We meet, we sit in your living room. I come prepared to tell you what uh, your house will sell for, how long it should take me to sell it, and um, you know how much it's going to cost you, what the fees are, all of that. So we've gone through the net sheet. You're comfortable. We decide to list it. So the next thing is going to be, when are you ready for photos? And that doesn't necessarily mean... Um, oh, I've got to declutter, I've got to get rid of things. For some people, it might be, oh, you know what? All my peonies all the way around the side of my house are going to be open next week. Can we wait for that? You know, so everybody has kind of different motivation. It's whatever it is that they love about their house. Um, you know, some might, might be seasonal and outside. Others might just be, okay, I want to make sure that now that it's January, of course, here we are, June, but if it were that all the Christmas decorations have been removed. So there's just sure. di different things that we have to worry about. So if it's right now, they might say, 
let me get through my kid's graduation party. I just have to focus oh, yeah. on that. And then when I'm done with that, I'll be ready to put away all those extra tables and chairs and da 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 da. So but, we, we, we make a calendar. We make a timeline. Okay. Does that ever come into play that you say, you know what, before we take the pictures, you probably really need to paint this wall or, you know, those kind of things? Sometimes. Um, so it used to be when when I got into the business and the houses took four to six months to sell on average, we would try to make them look as perfect as possible. And sometimes that meant having to change your carpet, having to paint your walls, having to change your kitchen appliances. I mean, sometimes it was a lot. And then when things started to sell a little more readily years later, um, it was a little less. And then in 2008 and 9 and 10, when you couldn't, no matter what you did, you couldn't give the house away. And most people were upside down in them. I would say you don't want to spend any more money because you're already going to have to bring money to the table. Yeah. So it's just, again, everything is so it according depends. to the current market. Yes. Okay. And so that's why it's so important that you're working with someone who understands all this and understands what the market is. And is this the market where it's going to sell for max dollars if I do nothing or am I actually going to get more if I invest $5,000? Because yep. if you're going to invest $5,000 and get the same exact price you were going to get if you didn't, it's really bad advice for someone to tell you to do that. Just adds to the stress. And they'll say, well, it'll sell faster. Well, let me tell you what, it's going to sell fast regardless. Okay. So does that mean I've never told people that they have to do things? I mean, recently I sold a really nice house, high fives for a couple that had moved away to Texas. And they said, Robin, we want our house to sell quickly. We've already purchased a house in Texas. You know, clearly we didn't need to sell this one to buy that one, but we don't want a house in Minnesota while we live in Texas. So what do we need to do to make this thing sell fast? Well, the house had been lived in. They lived there a long time. They had kids, they had pets. I said, if you want the truth, I think we have to freshen it up. As long as you've, you're moving out and it's going to be empty, it's easy to just put in new carpet and paint the walls. And so they did, and we sold it in one day. Oh, and they were go. thrilled to death. They were thrilled to death. And I'm not sure that it would have looked, you know, because sometimes houses look just fine when the furniture's in. You don't notice the wear in the carpet. You don't notice the um, difference in paint colors and stuff like that because where things have faded behind pictures, the pictures are still on the wall. You don't notice it. But sure. when the house is vacant, it's hard to hide anything. So again, every situation is different, but they did it. It was well worth it. They definitely sold to get, you know, high enough to get that money back. Right. But that's what it's good with working with you like that. And I, I'm, I can, cause I wouldn't know. I, yeah. And I lined I them up. You and so I'd say, should I or shouldn't I? And I lined them up with people that could do these jobs very inexpensively versus a lot of the people on the market because these are people, contractors that will work specifically with realtors to help their clients get their house ready huh. for the market. Awesome. So yeah, there's, so it's having those connections and knowing those people and being able to give those numbers as well. So okay. that's another question when you're interviewing an agent, you know, if there are things I need to do, are you going to be able to help put me in touch with people to do this work? Because I don't know anybody. Right. So I've got the pictures, right? We've taken pictures. What's the next step after that? So then, um, depending on if your house is furnished when we took the pictures or if, like that house, it's vacant. Because with the vacant ones, then I send them away to have the rooms virtually staged. So we use a company out of Australia called Boxed Brownie. And they don't have to haul furnishings into your house. They're not dinging up your walls. They're not traipsing across your carpet. These are interior decorators that are putting right size, right proportion, right style of furniture in your rooms virtually so that when someone is online searching through the photos, it looks like a perfectly appointed home. Like, wow, look at this house. It's absolutely beautiful because everything is in its place. They put things virtually on the walls, virtually on the countertops, towels virtually on the towel bars. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. And then when people come, they see the house empty, but they say, oh, yeah, those people had a big sectional here because they're not necessarily aware that that wasn't the way the yeah. house was furnished. You know, they just 
because sometimes people have already moved out or they've already sold half their stuff or maybe it's a divorce and the person who moved out took half the stuff and the house just doesn't look the greatest that way. So then I say, get it all out and I'll virtually stage it and it'll show like a million bucks because so many of the buyers initiate their buy on the internet. Yeah. Right? So I'm sure, yeah. So it's it's important that it shows up well and, and the pictures look good. So that, so now, if your house already was perfectly show ready and your furnishings were what we used, then as soon as I get those photos back, you're ready to hit the market. Now, the big question is, do we go coming soon or do we just start your listing effectively today? Okay. Why don't we take a break and then talk about the differences between the two when we get right back, okay? Okay. All right. We're talking about selling your home with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax Results and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're back. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results, talking about selling our house. So right before we took the break, you said there's two options, coming soon or putting it on the market right away. Correct. Okay. So one of those things that we talk about at our initial visit is what is your timeline? So if you tell me, well, you know, I've got a new job out in Arizona. My first day is August 24th. I've got to sell this house before I can buy out there. I say, okay, so you want to be out there for sure buying by the end of July. So we shouldn't really waste any time. We should get this house photographed and on the market as soon as we can because then we can start getting the showings. And then if somebody buys it in the first week and they're going to close 30 days, now you know you can go to Arizona and say it's my offer is based on a successful closing of my home in Minnesota. You'll close prior to needing the funds to close on the new one to get settled in in time for your job. So those are all the kind of things I take into consideration. But coming soon is something that is a very strategic move in listing um, especially unique homes or highly sought after homes. So this might be, I used one recently in a house that was listed for 260,000. Well, because if we just list it and put the sign in the yard, we're definitely gonna get an offer very quickly. But if I go coming soon for, oh, three, four, five days on the internet, more buyers are gonna get a chance to see it and then they can schedule a showing. So then the day that we actually hit the market ready for showings, we've got 12 showings lined up. And out of those 12 showings, we're gonna get five, six offers. And that's how I'm gonna get the most money for my seller. So it's very strategic. So it creates a buzz. It does. And you know, in a uh, average, so like this other house that I was thinking of when I was telling the story, beautiful home, just absolutely beautiful home. $590,000, but you know, two stories Southwest, it's going to sell. Well, as a matter of fact, it's, it's sold. It's sold in nine days, I think nine or 10 days, but truth be told, I didn't see any huge advantage for them to go coming soon when their timeline was to get it sold so they mm. could get out of state and buy a new house. Right. Sure. But another one that I just put on the market yesterday as coming soon is a really nice um, ranch style house out on Lake Zumbro on Ryan's Bay Road. No, oh, yeah. And this one we're gonna go coming soon because if we don't, if we would have just hit the market yesterday, we would probably have an offer this weekend. But then next week I might get a call from somebody and say, oh my God, I was on vacation. I cannot believe I missed it. I've been waiting five years to get on that lake. You know, so we just wanna give everybody a chance to see it. And again, yes, we're thinking about all those buyers, but I work for the seller. So I'm thinking about getting the best offer and the most offers and the bidding war. And I don't like to drag my feet. So when that first offer comes in, I wanna have an answer in 24 hours. I don't say, okay, I've got an offer and I'm gonna wait four more days. Because in the contract, even though there's no 
legitimate time, it does say time is of the essence. And I am very much a professional and I take that very seriously. So if I have a house listed and an agent brings me an offer and they're giving my sellers what they want, I do not feel it is the ethical or right thing to do to say, well, you know what? We're going to wait till next Friday. Give us a week. See if we get any other offers. No. I mean, they listed their house and said, if you give us this, we'll take it. But if I've given people a week to notice the house, to see the house, to schedule an appointment, now I feel like everybody's had a fair chance. Yes, I see that. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Yeah, and so while it's on the coming soon, people can look at photos on the website, but they just can't go into the house. They absolutely cannot go in, and that means not even with me. So if people say, oh, I'm going to call the listing agent directly and see if she can get me in there before anybody else sees it, the answer is no. The sure. rule is, is when it's coming soon, it cannot be shown by anybody until the day it becomes available. So for this whole week, people are going to be drooling about that house with the extra wide lake frontage out there on Lake Zumbro on Ryan's Bay Road, but they're going to be scheduling appointments like crazy. So next Friday, when it's actually open for showings, it'll be shown all day long. And then by the weekend, we should have it sold. Okay, so this isn't fictional. You actually have this house on coming I, ha- I actually have this, yeah, okay. com- coming soon, as, uh, as I mean, of yesterday. This that makes true. it even better, okay. Yes. <laughs> all right, so we go through all this. I get the offer I like. I sell the house. I say, okay. You got to do this quickly. We only have about a minute. My goodness. So you, you accept an offer, you get a contract, right? Yep. And then it's inspections and all if the contingencies. If it's contingent upon inspection, we get through those contingencies. Yeah. And again, this is where you need the guidance from your realtor. So this is why I just, I just don't recommend that you do it for sale by owner. And I'm not saying because I want your commission and I'm just Use any good realtor, honestly, but do yourself a favor and use a good realtor. Yeah. But okay. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. And yeah, every single transaction looks different. There's no two the same. It's not like, oh, um, you know, this is a procedure that we do and this is the steps. Like we'll write the manual. You first do this and then do this and then do this. Every transaction looks differently. It's, is it coming soon? Did it come on the market right away? Do we have one offer? Do we have 10 offers? You know, what What are the conditions to the offers? Because it's not just about the price. It's about, do they have to sell something? Are they doing yeah. an inspection? Or are they not doing an inspection? There's just so much to know, so many layers, and most definitely worth lining yourself up with a professional. Well, from my pers- perspective, it's a no-brainer. After everything we've just yeah. talked about, it's a no-brainer. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you're not shutting off your phone this weekend. To be at this I'm not shutting off my phone for a <laughs> great long time. So if you want to call, I mean, I, I deserve that break, but I am 100% full forces working. So feel free to call me on my cell phone. And that number is 507-259-4926. All right, Robin, thank you so much. And I look forward to chatting again next week. Sounds great. All right. That's Robin Gwaltney. It's Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results. Here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM at 96.9.